Here we go with our unit 7.1 organic chemistry. Uh, one of the best parts of this unit is there's not a whole lot of stuff to memorize because most of the things you need to know are built right into the reference table. So that's going to make this one uh, a bit easier. So it's more of an understanding unit. First thing we have to talk about is why is carbon so special? Well, as you already know, one of the things that makes carbon special is the fact that it has four valence electrons. Right? And if we draw a Lewis dot structure, right, the two up top, one over here, and one here, for a total of four valence electrons. But what these electrons do is these four electrons, or when, they, when carbon forms bonds, these electrons and thus the single bonds spread out evenly to, cre to create what's called a tetrahedral molecule, kind of like a tripod. So the valence electrons actually spread out, so we would draw a Lewis dot structure like so. And what's nice about that is carbon can form four bonds, which you already know. Right? And then when it forms these bonds, here's our carbon molecule, It's they spread out like so and form this tetrahedral shape. We'll draw it, normally we won't draw it like this, obviously, normally. We'll draw it like so, or even just the lazy way, like so. But the actual shape is more like this pyramid tetrahedral shape. All right, now carbon does all sorts of things. Carbon atoms share electrons with other carbon atoms, forming covalent chains, rings, and networks. And two adjacent carbon atoms can share up to three pairs of electrons. So you can have carbon sharing one like this, and then it has, they each have room for th three more bonds. You can have them sharing two pairs of electrons, giving them each room for two more bonds. Or they can share one, two, three pairs of electrons, giving each room for one more bond. Remember that each shared pair of electrons is represented by a line. So this represents a shared pair. This represents two shared pairs. This represents three shared pairs. Oh, I could have drawn that neater now, couldn't I? Okay. So single bond, double bond, triple bond. All right, hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons are organic molecules containing carbon and hydrogen. Now, saturated hydrocarbons have all single bonds between carbons. Remember, a single dashed line is a single bond, which has one shared pair or two electrons total, making up that single bond. All right, so C, like so, if it's a Lewis structure, or Lewis structure, I replace the shared pair with a line. And here's an example of a saturated hydrocarbon. There are all single bonds. Unsaturated hydrocarbons are going to have at least one multiple bond in the carbon chain. Remember, two dash lines is going to represent a double bond, and that means there's two shared pairs of four electron totals making up that double bond. So here's an example of an unsaturated carbon with one double bond, with one saturated hydrocarbon with one double bond. Now, three dashed lines represents a triple bond, right? So you have three shared pairs, six total electrons making up these triple bonds. And here's an example of an unsaturated hydrocarbon with one triple bond. All right, so general properties of organic compounds, okay? Their bonding is going to be covalent or molecular. Remember, because we're talking carbon and hydrogen, nonmetal and nonmetal. Most are insoluble in water because they are generally nonpolar. Remember, like dissolves like. So since our organic compounds tend to be nonpolar, right, since the organic compounds tend to be nonpolar, they won't dissolve in water. Most are non-conductors, whether they're solid, liquid, or if it happens to be soluble in an aqueous state. 
There's one type we'll learn about called organic acids. They'll ionize in solution, but they still tend to be uh, poor conductors. Okay? They tend to have weak intermolecular forces, which lead to low melting and boiling points. They tend to react slowly. Well, covalent molecules tend to have relatively high numbers of bonds, so there's going to be more steps in reaction, so the re any reactions with organic compounds take much, much longer. Okay, you're going to have to learn about different types of chemical formulas here. So molecular formulas we're used to where they simply show the number of atoms of each element in a compound doesn't tell you much. With certain types of things, you know, ionic compounds, it tells you enough. But especially when we get to organic chemistry, these don't really tell you a lot. Okay. Structural formulas are going to show the number of atoms of each element and the arrangement of the atoms. These are much, much more informative. So here's a molecular formula for propane. Here's a structural formula for propane. We can see how everything is laid out. Condensed formula is kind of a, a best of both worlds. It combines the structural and molecular formulas. Each carbon is written with its constituent, separate those, sorry about that, hydrogens, followed by the proper subscript. So we could write this, watch, right, there's a carbon and one, two, three hydrogens attached to it, a carbon with two hydrogens attached to it, and another carbon with three hydrogens attached to it. So propane there ends up being CH3, CH2, CH3. All right, question time. Here we have some organic and inorganic molecules. All right, you need to be able to compare and or contrast. And the other two are really, really simple. If you can't answer those, you really need to go back and watch the video again. And I'll see you guys in school.